Hi, my name is Katharina Michio, and you are joining us on Indie Film Online and the Venus Italian International Film Festival. Um, today, we have Drew Hendrickson, who happens to be an amazing uh, screenwriter, and I've read a bunch of his scripts and given him many awards for each of them because I absolutely love his work. So let's bring him in. Hi, Drew. <laughs> teaching online full time, writing stuff, and you know. So you're teaching on um, via Zoom to the whole class? Um, not Zoom. They didn't huh? want us doing that because there was like interruptions. It would get hacked. So what I do is I post my lessons online, I give the assignments, oh. I give my exams, they give it back to me, you know, when they get to it. Yes, we, we have to say you are a forensic, uh, forensics instructor, right? Uh, yeah, I yes. teach it in the high school, but I also teach it for Syracuse University in the high school, so it is a college class. Oh, okay, wow. I've always been very impressed that you could do that. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah. Have you ever put anything uh, from that into your scripts? Um, little, little bits a little bit. of it. Um, Maybe in Smokes? In Smokes, a TV pilot for, um, do you know Eddie McGee and Kurt Yeager? Eddie they're McGee. friends among their actors, they're amputees, they're missing portions of their legs. For real? For real, but they're successful actors. They Eddie McGee is in a in a film. He's in uh, Gem in the Photo. No, no, a confidant, confidant. One of yes. the uh, yes. So I wrote a TV pilot for for them as detectives, and I put a lot of forensics in that. Ah, oh. and and I do it subtly. I haven't. I think people are like oversaturated with all forensics all the time. So I put. I put it in there, but a lot of forensic psychology I put in um, to my scripts for behavior and s things such as that, because a lot of people get things wrong. <laughs> right. Have you ever been like an advisor on any shows? For, um... Um, yes, yes. Actually, um, I have. Um, Nick and Nikki, um, Patrick asked me a lot of forensic questions, because th that's a murder mystery. Uh, let's go back to your Nick and Nora Childs movie. So Patrick Askin had asked me, I gave him blood spatter advice. I gave him, you know, advices on crime scene investigation. They could have used you on Dexter, right? <laughs> they could have used you on Dexter. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's, Dexter gets things wrong. I'm actually, did. Oh, I'm actually horrified. <laughs> and with blood spat, a lot of times I'll be watching an episode and they get the patterns wrong. 99.9% .9 of the population, I'm not going to pick up on that. Wow. I pick up on it. Of course. They, they see that, that scene when Adam Lecter is like this and the blood spatter is supposed to be coming back. It should be <laughs> like sprayed back on his face but when he turns around it's perfectly round dots which means it came at a direct 90 degree angle I'm like that's wrong wow that's amazing that's that's amazing i mean i pick up things on sets but i don't think i'd get in which direction the blood would have gone to <laughs> just it's a mess usually uh look i see I spy, I spy, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's 
she's right back. next to my grandmother. She's, oh, the next. <laughs> that's awesome. Drew got these last year. Oh, that's my grandmother from, from Palermo. <laughs> Aw, oh, that's amazing. As I cover, as I smother her, you know. <laughs> um, you got those in the um, in the Venus Festival last year in Las Vegas. Yes, so, I did. It was beautiful. It was the best part of my trip. Oh, thank you. Classy. <laughs> well, let's talk about your script. Oi ve Maria. <laughs> Oi ve Maria, oi. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you about Oy Vey Maria. Where, is your, where do you get these things out of your head? <laughs> Please. Actually, <laughs> it, it's not really based on reality, but I actually had a great aunt. Um, her name, um, actually, my aunt, my mother's sister, Agatha Fierro. Her sister-in-law was Marie Fierro. She was a nun. And there was like nine kids in that family. My uncle Michael, my, her, his sister, all of this. Um, and one of them got really sick. Um, both the man and wife got really sick. I forgot their names. So Marie moved out of convent and helped raise these kids. And a couple of them, this being Brooklyn, a couple of them grew up and, you know, Brooklyn, Long Island. And some of them, you know, married people of the Jewish faith. And I always thought this was funny, but it really is because the, the culture is almost exactly the same. Yeah. And, um, and then one time I'm at work, I was working at Southside Hospital at the time. And something happened. And I said, yeah, can you imagine if one of them father was a rabbi? <laughs> and I just said, like, yeah, they'd be saying the Oive Maria instead of the Ave Maria. <laughs> and that put the thought in my I head. I didn't put that together. <laughs> That's right. The Ave Maria. Oive Maria. That's funny. <laughs> You, and at the same, and at the same time, a, a lot of <laughs> Nora Ephron movies were coming out, a lot of Nora Ephron scripts. And like I thought, you know what, this would be a great plot for a Nora Ephron style yeah. type of story. So then I tried to think of it, okay, now what can I do with the interviews to make them different? You know, I didn't want to make it like Nora Ephron with it. And then uh, RuPaul was popular at the time. I go, wouldn't it be funny if you had a black transvestite telling the love story about a nun and a rabbi and their children? <laughs> you just go there. <laughs> yep. And that I did. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it is. It's very funny. And, you know, I love all that different culture stuff because of my, you know, my uh, screenplay, my, my uh, film, St. Joseph. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, and I love, I love your scripts. What did you, oh, thank your, you. Uh, smokes? I can't remember. I've, I've given you so many awards because I love your, yeah, films, um, your scripts. So, um, I, I actually, I was nominated, actually, Venus, I was nominated, I think, another because my own story smoked was up against goodfella pizza oh oh right ah. so i i won at venus for goodfella pizza but i won at cunning room for smokes ah oh okay i think <laughs> i think so I, I i think so because um i i loved smokes that I really that one stuck in my head a lot. I love that script. I love all your scripts. Oh, You're thank really, you. Really, really good writer. Well, thank you very much. Well, and and so has anything um, made it to the screen? Did you um, write American? The, um, uh, what, what's that? Gunslingers. Um, American Gunslingers. American Gunslinger is now in pre-production. Oh, yeah. Event. Right? It was fun. Well, I thought it was hysterical that right down the street, it was the Star Trek convention. 
Oh, that's right. I, they were coming in and out of the hotel, Captain Kirk. So, and, you know, we're, we're sitting there, we're talking that. to you, you know, we're at the lounge, I'm with these other filmmakers, I'm with you. And by the way, I love St. Joseph. And then Spock and Uhura join in. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, invite into And then like, I'm chugging a beer with the Klingon. <laughs> it's like, okay. You never they, know who you're going to meet at film festivals. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah, it was a memorable time for sure. Um, and I think that the the event was uh, really cool. And I was going to have it at the uh, at the Hard Rock in Miami this year. But then all the so you know, you got to do what you got to do. And so I, I'm doing what I can. And, you know, I really want to uh, put you in the magazine. I'd love to do an article on you. Absolutely. Oh, that sounds good to me. Well, because you've written an abundance of scripts and, um, and novels. I have three published novels out. You do. Book of the trilogy, Dragons and Wolves. And there's a whole trilogy, the sci fi fantasy. And you'll appreciate this. It was actually translated into Italian ah. by another publisher. My publisher had That's made it. Lupe, the, Lupe, there's a wolves. The Lupe. Yeah, Greg Lupe. and Lupe. <laughs> Dragons and Wolves. Wow. Yeah, and it's like the same book, but only they, in Italian. And it sells in Italian, in, in Italy. It sells I in actually Italy. sold better in Europe in Italian than I did here in America in English. But you. I, but it didn't sell enough for them to translate the whole trilogy. Oh. One, one, one of my dreams would be um, if they ever did a TV show um, based on my trilogy. I developed this whole universe, this sci-fi fantasy universe. That's an expensive of, of show. Dragon. So the whole, the whole trilogy <laughs> is called Dragon Tales and Stories. Wow. So, where, where does all this come from in your mind? It's amazing, especially sci-fi. It's like, it's so out there. Yeah, well, any writing, be it comedy, yeah. be it sci-fi fantasy, be it a Western, it's all dramas about people and people's development. You have a story you know, like, like St. Joseph's. You put St. Joseph's 200 years in the future, it's now a sci-fi story. Mm -hmm. In reality, it's a comedy. You said it in the future, it's now sci-fi. So mm -hmm. a story is a story. It doesn't matter where you put the setting. Okay. The, the setting can add to the story, you know, can give it some flavor to it or something like that. But your story is your story, no matter what the setting is. If it's sci-fi fantasy, if it's a rom-com or whatever, it's about humans. It's about people and personal growth. And that's why it's so good to like go to festivals and, and to have jobs, if you have a job that can do this, to involve you with other people. The more people you meet, it's just more game plays that you have in your head. Yes. And ha have you ever had like one friend that you would love to interact with, and maybe not romantically, or maybe romantically, you have one friend and another friend, it's like, I would love to see how these two would react together in a situation that you've oh. never met before. <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah. You know, especially now with these interviews, um, not only am I getting a feel of the, more of, you know, what's coming out of the filmmakers, the screenwriters' heads, but where it came from and, um, and their life and where, you know, where all that. And then I go, ooh, maybe this person would, could get along with that person. I'd see the, you know, similarities and <laughs> I'm doing that while I'm doing interviews, you know, in my mind. <laughs> well, but, I never forget seeing you and Lucas Hassel up on stage <laughs> together. We, and like, I know, like, like I said, it was like one of those like morning news programs with YouTube bantering back and forth. Obviously, it's not scripted, but it, no. it's on cue. The comic timing was perfect. I'll you tell know, you, like, um, I, I asked Lucas, I only 
like knew him for, you know, I met him maybe twice, but I, you know, he's tall, gorgeous man. I'm like, okay, I could have that next to me as a, <laughs> as a co-host. I'll take it. And I said, oh, I can do for everyone, men and women. <laughs> so, um, and I asked him if he would do it and he, and he agreed. And we just met like the day before said, all right, we're going to do this and that and, you know, whatever. And, but as far as like personalities, we never had like a regular conversation together, you know, until we got up on stage <laughs> and then it was, it was hysterical. We were both, we and, were bantering. And, you, and, and it see, and it came out of you so natural too. So it's just like, and that's what, you know, the, the whole process of writing is, it's like when you have a situation, people's interactions with each other and stuff like that. And when you see, you know, and it just flows out, it's just like writing. And Lucas is a phenomenal writer too. And, you know, you're a fantastic writer. So it's just like when, when your mindset is open to stuff like that, it just flows right out of you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the Q and A's and the red carpet that, what did you suggest that everybody should get dressed up, right? <laughs> dressed up, if we have a virtual, everybody gets dressed up yes. and have a big Italian meal in front of them. <laughs> we'll be eating spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not lucky. You cut to me just as I'm like sucking up the That's spaghetti. So strand, you know, it's like, a... <laughs> and the winner is. <laughs> And it's like, I'm sitting like, why, thank you. <laughs> That's so funny. But I love that idea. And I've been telling everybody, <laughs> you have to get dressed up. And, um, you know, so, and, and it'll be a virtual red carpet. I'd do what I could do, you know. And um, so we're going to have after, when is your, uh, oh, no, you have a script. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you could come on the Q&As if you want. Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, why not? And um, if, you know, you're going to see some films, right? I hope you're going to see some oh, of the box. Absolutely. Yeah. There's some really, really good uh, films in this. The, the Italian, you know, and every, and every block has a feature at the end. So they're real, really great. And, um, and then the awards are on Monday, Monday night at 8 o'clock. So yeah, it's gonna it be doesn't even matter now that if it's a school night or not. <laughs> no, every day is the same. <laughs> it's Groundhog Day. It'll be Italian Groundhog Day. Okay, um, <laughs> wow, and so what a reference that is. Yes, every day has been feeling like Groundhog Day. <laughs> I have a quick question joke for you. Okay. Getting back to Oive Maria. Okay, yes, please. What please. is the difference between the Jewish mother and the Italian mother. The Jewish mother will die if you don't eat. The Italian mother will kill you if you don't eat. <laughs> that is, that's great. <laughs> Very funny. I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah, you would never hear a Jewish mother saying that. <laughs> but she says, eat. <laughs> I'll kill you if you don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. That's great. All my Irish and Jewish friends would come over to my house to eat. We would go <laughs> then to my Irish friend's house to drink, you know, <laughs> because we were underage, but back then, you know, they didn't care. You, you know, you were 15. Yeah, that's fine. And then, like, we would go to the, our Jewish friend's house to, like, hang out in the house, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just hang yeah. out. And I, and I just thought all of America was like that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Pretty much. Um, I didn't... It's all a, a thing of diversity and how everybody, yes. you know, does, you know, we're all the same. <laughs> yeah, a little Mista. Mm. Yeah, are you in the Mista films? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm trying to, this time I'm trying to get other people to pay for it. Well, you have to shop around. Oh, well, well I, I, uh, an agent or an attorney oh, yeah. out the scripts for you. 
you mm-hmm. know they ha- you have to get your scripts out true you have to well, I, so, I know i and that's why i put the scripts into the film festival because now it's advertisement so when an agent or even a producer like types in my name and type you know they see all these other scripts and that's why i want you um to have an, an article in the in the magazine too i got you back <laughs> I, right, I, this you. is the reason that i made the ma- magazine you know yeah. this court film well originally i said i need a home for all three film festivals and then <laughs> i said because i'm all jumping all over from one website to the other I said, everything has to go to one. So um, so then I was like, oh, maybe I could get advertising. And then, oh, why don't I just bring in other filmmakers? And now I'm doing interviews. So now, you know, it'll be like an online YouTube channel, magazine, you know, all kinds of things. So yeah, it just evolved. So, I mean, I'm only charging like $50 a page right now. Yeah. But, but when um when i get advertising i won't have to charge the filmmakers anything and that's right so that's really my goal yeah so you know once we get some advertisers and and get the magazine really going which will because yeah i'm gonna put some really cool people on the cover and uh <laughs> i have some you know a lot of cool people <laughs> and i know a lot of cool people so yeah so perfect well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes, and um, you enjoy the rest of the day, and we'll see you. We'll see you on during Q and A. All right, and yeah. then after that, the awards. Yeah, thank you, Katerina. Thank you. <laughs> bye, Drew. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> bye.